So you're a software engineer trying to keep up with the world. And if you're anything like me, maybe you're feeling a little bit stressed because things are changing every single day. Like, don't even get me started on the amount of new JavaScript frameworks that I apparently now need to learn. But what if there was a way to speed run all of these things so that you can stay on top of your tech world without having to like sell your soul to the devil or burn yourself out? And in this video, we're gonna dive into three actionable tips on how I self-study anything, but as a software engineer. So tip number one is to use the Feynman technique. And honestly, I started to use this technique long before I ever knew who Feynman was. And if you don't know, this technique was coined by Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winner for tiny particle work, literally smaller than an atom. And this technique has four critical steps. And rather than just explain it to you, I figured why don't we actually walk through an example together. The first step of this technique is to actually just write down the name of the topic or concept that you're trying to learn. So for this silly little example, just to keep things basic and understandable, let's talk about software dependencies. And this first step may seem so silly, but I actually find it super helpful to just kind of laser and focus in on something so concrete, so specific, specific so that I actually can start asking the right questions and targeting what I'm trying to learn. The second step is to simply explain it. Don't use any of the buzzwords, just put it in a understandable way as if you were explaining it to yourself or more ideally explaining it to somebody else. And if you have a spouse or significant other out there, use them as the dummy here because I talk tech to my wife all the time. She doesn't always understand what the hell I'm trying to say, but I literally have gone as far as explaining what Jira tickets were using an analogy of a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So in spirit of our software dependencies topic, I'm gonna to simply explain this as like a tree house. What are the, some of the things that you need? Lumber, some nails, maybe some glue. You also need some tools like a hammer or a saw maybe a ladder if we want to be remotely safe but all of these things you actually depend on for you to build the treehouse you're gonna need the lumber and you're gonna go to the box store and buy pre-cut lumber i don't think you're just gonna chop down a tree and harvest it yourself and if you do that maybe you should just start a TikTok because you can become famous by you just chopping trees down and this is exactly like software dependencies because if you think about it if i want to build a mobile app some of my dependencies might be things like react native or expo the third step is to go back to the source material if you start getting stuck identify the gaps and actually what's really helpful is if you explain this in super simple terminology you probably will initially struggle and identify gaps in just your own knowledge because you can't explain it simply and for our software dependencies example perhaps some of the questions you ask are things like why do i use dependencies why not just write everything myself why not roll my own auth okay now that i have dependencies do i need to manage them do i have to watch what version they are what the hell is a dependency conflict and the last step of this four-step process is to simplify and associate some kind of analogy to it and for our dependencies treehouse example i actually already did this to you i told you i was going to use pre-cut lumber that i got at a box store and i wasn't going to just go chop down trees and harvest it myself this is the power of analogies some of you may have been like well no shit like it obviously it made sense the way you explained it because it was super simple and it did have something you could relate to like going to the box store and buying some material that's the power that's the beauty when you actually apply some kind of analogy that's meaningful to you that's what's going to start building those neural connections so that you actually remember this and the second tip to learning anything and truthfully it wouldn't be a software engineering video without this is to use AI and I'm not talking hit up LLMs to copy and paste code to build your next cool SaaS product or startup but what I'm talking about is using AI as your freaking personal tutor like there's a lot of videos on cursor v0 the next best thing to actually produce your code but I hope it wasn't lost upon you that you literally have the best Google sitting right inside your pocket to help you solve and identify all these problems these are the machines that can help you produce study sheets that you can use to rubber duck, that you can leverage to build a roadmap. The machine that you can literally take any topic, let alone software topics, but any topic and ask Claude, GPT, whoever to apply the Feynman technique and explain it to you in that simplified way. Like no shit, somewhere on the screen right now is what I got back from asking Claude to explain the treehouse example in a Feynman technique. So I use it too. So use it to your advantage. Ask the LLM to generate you practice problems, give it a correct answer and ask the LLM how you could be more concise or add more clarity or give back more value in your explanation and then just iterate just continue to learn stack that up over and over and what's really cool is when you start tweaking with the LLMs over long time history and it starts to learn you and then you can build really legitimate solid roadmaps for not only just the projects you're building but your career path too. the last step in how I learn anything and quite truthfully for me personally this is what really drives it home for me. And that is to go and make some damn projects. And maybe that came off a little aggressive. Good. For me, 
this is what really really solidified anything I wanted to learn is when I went and actually applied it got my freaking hands dirty and quite truthfully this is the most fun I'm a problem solver I love puzzles and if you're watching this video and you've made it this far I think you are too and honestly if that's not your jam maybe you're in the wrong field or at least the wrong role in this field because these are the problems that keep our days joyful, the things that we love to solve, and the freaking dopamine rush whenever we do solve them. And just keep in mind that you don't need to build the next biggest SaaS. You don't need to build a freaking startup or a business. You don't have to make a dollar. You don't even have to want to make a penny on this thing. It doesn't need to be a portfolio project. It could just be private for you, dirty with no requirements, just so you can learn. And if you don't know where to start, why don't you just pick whatever your favorite library is, go read some of their source code, get in their Discord or Slack, I'm sure they have one, and just say, hey, I really love your product, would love to learn a little more about this specific piece, link them to the code, and just start the dialogue. You know, you gotta low-key build a little bit of a network then too, and maybe one day you get to contribute back to that open source product that you already use and love. And who knows, if you stuck around with the software dependencies example, even though it's silly, maybe that is your jam, maybe that is your vibe, go make a reusable library, go make the next best hand stack, and I'm sure you're gonna have a lot of fun along the way. Once you go through the struggles and actually see that you've learned something and got to apply it to a project, use Claude to break it down down into the Feynman technique and then asked it to build a roadmap in whatever language that you love, I know that whatever it is that you're trying to learn is gonna be completely locked in. And quite truthfully, following these exact steps has helped my career more than anything else, more than reading documentation, more than just grinding more hours out. Applying this learning strategy has actually helped me grow my career, increase my knowledge, and have a lot more fun along the way. So I hope this helps and this is my exact process. And look, to be completely honest here, building a SaaS or a startup is kind of all the rage right now. And if you wanna know how I would launch a SaaS in 90 days or less, click the card somewhere up here. And with that, I will see you all next week. Peace.